Well, hello, hello, God bless you. It's your girl, Benita. Just want to welcome everyone today. We're back, going back to basics, talking about depression, and we'll also later on um, talk about anxiety, but we're talking about depression. Yesterday, we talked about what depression is. We talked about both a clinical definition of depression and we also talked about the spiritual perspective that God has shared with me and he shared it with me um, as I began to emerge from a tumultuous season of depression that not only included suicidal ideations but also several suicidal attempts. I know how it is to be so depressed that you cannot lift your head from the pillow. I know how it is to feel that life is completely worthless, that you are worthless, that God has abandoned you, that God is your enemy, that he has no desire for you to live. I know how it is to you know, not be understood by people, even though I'm trying to plainly tell them what's going on with me, that there's a disconnect and they're angry with me and I can't get out of the gloom. So I know how it is. I know the frustration. I know the gloom. I know the negative thinking. I know when you can come to a place of complete hopelessness where you you know, believe that the only answer is for you to attempt to take your life. I have been there. I have done that. I have been in a psychiatric ward. I have attempted to to kill myself, OD'd, stabbed myself, purchased rat poison, gone down to a river, contemplated um, jumping in. I even used to leave my home, my family, in the middle of the night after I had gotten to a point that it was just just it was just hopeless it was time for me to die i would leave my family in the middle of the night and go and hitchhike and try to find people who i could hire to murder me and um so i know about that i know about feeling that what's the use of opening your eyes to be so tired to be so full of gloom but can i tell you the truth Can I tell you that I came out of that? Can I tell you? Look at me. Honestly, I came out of depression, and I have been able to remain depression-free. Amen. It it was work. (laughs) I had to partner with the Holy Spirit, but I had a part to play. And I had to do more than ask people to pray for me. I had to do some work. Amen. And God began to reveal to me um, what I had to do in order to come out of depression. And then he began to show me what I had to do on a daily basis to remain depression free. Because that area, our soul, our emotions, our will, and our mind are our responsibilities to take care of. But I'm getting ahead of myself. (laughs) We'll be talking about that on tomorrow. But today we're going to talk about how it is that a person gets depressed what exactly is the process of us going from not being depressed to being depressed let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you and praise you for this opportunity god it is so amazing to me that you actually helped me to come out of the claws of the enemy you actually helped me to come off a suicidal watch you god actually healed me from uh, times that I tried to slip my wrist. You are an amazing God. I give you all of the praise and the honor that you showed me that I had a part to play, but that I could partner with the precious and powerful Holy Spirit and that he and I together would walk out of the claws of the enemy. God, it took a lot of time It took a lot of work. It took a lot of warfare, God. But I want to thank you and praise you, Lord God, that you are faithful. And now you give me the opportunity to help your people. God, it just touches my heart so deeply. I just want to say publicly, thank you so much. Thank you for wanting me to live when I did not want to live. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to learn spiritual principles, to learn about the power that lived on the inside of me. God, 
thank you. And thank you for the privilege to now help my brothers and sisters. I humble myself before you. I am nothing in and of myself, God. God, I thank you that there are no new tricks. So I'm simply regurgitating, Lord God, things that have happened in my life that happened in the lives of my sisters and brothers in Christ. But I thank you that you are raising up an army. Oh God, and you've given me the privilege and the honor to be able to empower the soldiers that you're raising up that will help others. In Jesus' name, thank you. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Wow. Sometimes I get so caught up just, you know, really thinking about the whole situation. But um, we're going to go ahead with today's lesson. Today we're talking about how does a person become depressed? Well, first of all, I want to let you know that the... Um, um, perspective that God gave me is that depression is not grief, depression is not sadness, depression is not a punishment from God, depression is not a sign that you have a lack of faith or that you are lazy. It is absolutely not. Um, God began to show me that depression was a threefold demonic attack on each part of the soul. The soul we talked about yesterday, and I want to encourage you if you have not seen that, what is depression, that you will look at that particular video, because I gave a demonstration about how we are tripart, that we are a spirit with a soul housed in a body. There are three distinct places. And so that soul area is comprised of our will. Our will is the controller of our soul. That's where we, that is the mechanism that either accepts or rejects things. That's our soul. We talk about, you probably familiar with the term free will. That's the part of us that God does not control. Amen. That we make our own decisions. He can influence our will, but we make our own decisions. Amen. And then we have emotions. Those are those feelings, negative or positive. And then we also have a mind. Amen. We have that, which is comprised of our thoughts, our attitudes, moods, all types of things are in that area. Again, I want to encourage you to go back and look at the video. What is depression? And so what God began to, to show me is that the enemy actually attacks that area. Amen. And he lures us into that area um, in a very deceptive way. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is how does a person become um, depressed? Well, this is what God taught me is that, and I'm going to be referring to my notes so that I can make sure I stay on target and make sure I give you everything that you deserve to hear. Amen. The devil strategically introduces thoughts, thoughts are silent words in our mind, precisely at times that will yield the most damage to us and others, usually during a time of vulnerability it, or a time of fatigue, a time of indecision. It, it, the enemy will drop thoughts into our mind. It goes on to say here it can be times of mourning a loved one's death. It can be distress. It can be trauma. It can be physical or mental, emotional um, abuse. It could be um, sexual abuse. It can be illness. It can be lack of sleep. It can be times of financial difficulty, trials and tribulations. It can be uncertainty about the ways of God, the will of God. It can be physical ailments during times of disappointment, um, during times of feeling lonely. Um, it can be during times when we've had an argument with someone. Um, it could be following even a spiritual victory. It could just be in a regular um, daily encounter that the enemy will drop a thought in our mind but the deceptive thing about these thoughts is that they're believable they're believable they're logical and they are justifiable so it can be very very easily done and we can accept the thought let me just give you, for instance, let's say it's Monday morning and you wake up and it's raining outside. A thought may come to your mind. You're, or you may say, wow, it's raining. And you, that's it, right? And then a thought may come to your mind. I don't feel like going to work. And the enemy uses first person voice in the thoughts to make us think that it's us thinking it. 
I don't feel like going to work. And we may accept that thought. Our will, we use our will. And we accept that thought. Along with that thought, the enemy will release simultaneously a negative emotion. So the thought comes, I don't feel like going to work. And then you may feel extra tired. And you may accept that. And just that quickly, we have opened a passageway for the enemy to continue giving us negative thoughts and stimulating negative emotions. So another thought may come in. You said, I don't feel like going to work. They don't appreciate me anyway. These are the thoughts that may be coming in your mind. You know what? It doesn't seem like God even cares that I'm suffering in this job. And you're like, how did you get all the way over there? <laughs> well, the enemy has lured you by the thoughts and the corresponding negative emotions. Amen? And so when this happens and we receive it, we can begin, we can open a passageway for a spirit of heaviness, which we talked about, which is defined, which is identified in Isaiah 61 and 3. A spirit of heaviness. We open a passageway for it to attach itself to our soul. And so now we have an increase of negative thoughts. An increase of negative feelings. Amen. And as a result, there becomes a spiraling. A spiraling of sadness in that because why? Because there has been a gang of, of spirits that have disembodied beings. Spirits are disembodied beings. Think about um, you without a body. You have intellect, you have emotions. So that's what a spirit is, a disembodied being. D disembodied beings with a personality have attached themselves, this is what I learned, to our soul, to our thoughts, to our mind, and to our emotions. Spirit of gloom, mental obscurity, self-pity, and suicide has attached itself. Now, that spirit of suicide may or may not ever surface, but the enemy is going to try to lure you to a place of your will being weakened to a point that you will accept it. And you can. I know because I did accept the spirit of suicide. You can get, you can get beaten down in your emotions to a point that you feel like that's the only recourse. And you create what you call a soul tie with the negativity. So at first, with depression, you might start off fighting it. You know, oh my God, what is this? Get up, you know, because it seemed to me like it was just, this would come out of nowhere. Boop! You know, I'm like, what? Or when I wake up, bam, I'm already in this sadness. I'm like, what is, what? Hey, wait, hey, what is this? But after a while, the thoughts that are so justifiable according to whatever is going on in your life in the natural, without the intervention of God, can cause you to agree with it. And you attach yourself to it. You receive it. And so it becomes your go-to. We'll talk more about that on tomorrow. But today we're going to talk about the emotions. The negative emotions. Of course, we talked about the... Well, let's talk about the thoughts first. So the thoughts, of course, can be about that we are unloved, that we have, were unappreciated, we are forgotten, we have been abandoned, that we um, are failures, that um, we just cannot get anything right, that we don't have other things that other people have that make us feel significant, that people are our enemy, that God is our enemy. All these kinds of thoughts come, that life is just not worth living, that you have not, you're not significant, that you are not successful in anything. All of these thoughts can come. 
And there can be justifiable reasons right in front of you that would make you think so. Maybe you're not employed. Or maybe you have been rejected after you have gone on the interview. So a thought can come, my God, nobody wants me. Nobody. And even though these thoughts are, can be justified and they are believable, they're still lies. Oh, God, did you hear that? They're lies. They're lies. It's a lie that you are alone. It's a lie that God has abandoned you. You better hear me. It's a lie that he know, he, that you are worthless to him. It's a lie that you are worthless to your family. It's a lie that you are a failure. These are all deceptive, believable lies. Oh, come on, somebody. Even right now, it's a lie. That life would be better off for your family without you. You know why I know this? The devil doesn't do anything new. There are no new tricks because the old tricks work. They have worked. <laughs> so God does not want us to be ignorant of those tricks. All of these are lies, but they feel so truthful. They feel so justifiable. They feel that no nobody likes me you feel a feeling of emptiness well that has to do with the negative emotions that have been stimulated that were received or accepted so there is a systematic wearing down systematic release of additional negative feelings and negative thoughts let's talk about the emotions the emotions, and we're going to get right close out. The emotions, many times, that, that you, a depressed person, may feel or and accept. Abandonment, afflicted, afraid, aggravated. And I'll say that afraid because a lot of times, anxiety is coupled along with depression. But again, it is a negative emotion coming from the realm of the devil. Aggravated, you may feel aggressive, apprehensive, angry, annoyed, anxious, betrayed, bored, confused. You may feel that you're in denial, defensive, determined, displeased, distracted, distressed, disturbed, dissatisfied, disgusted, disappointed. You may feel envy, fear, frustration, guilt, grief, jealous. Negativity, offense, overwhelm, pride, regret, resentful, sadness, self-pity, which is a biggie. Self-pity is a biggie when it comes to depression. Poor me. Look at me. Why have I been treated like this? Why are they doing this to me? Why do I have to go through these trials? Why is life crazy for me? Self-pity. Even though when you look at the natural situation, maybe there has been a lot that has happened to you. But guess what? Self-pity is a lie. Come on, somebody. It's a lie that you have been completely overburdened with trials. I know it seems like that. But until, well, we'll talk about tomorrow. <laughs> I got to hold off. Amen. But these are lies. But they're very convincing. Because if you look at your life, you know, here it is. It looks just like it's true. But I'm here to tell you that it is a lie. You have, we have received a deceptive feeling and thought when we are depressed. Okay, shame is another one. You know, another. Stressed, troubled, upset, uncomfortable, unconcerned. Unhappy, victimized is another one. Biggie, vulnerable, worry. So if we go along with his agenda by receiving one or more of the emotions offered, he continues to stimulate negative emotions that correspond with existing negative thoughts. That's depression. The devil knows how connected we are to our emotions. Because we think we are what we feel, even though we're not what we feel. But that's something that you have to grow 
to know as you are emerging from depression and as you remain depression free. I'm not my feelings. I may feel a gloominess, but that's not who I am. I might feel abandoned, but that's not the truth. I might feel unloved, but that's a lie. And so we have to learn that we are not what we feel. We are not even what we think. But we are a child of God who has been attacked by the enemy. And then we are going to do our part to repossess the territory that he has encroached upon. And we're going to talk about how that happens for a believer when we talk tomorrow. I wonder, it says here unconsciously, we assist the devil in building a stronghold or a fortress of gloom within our own soul simply because we receive it. We receive it when we do nothing. When the thought comes to us and we say nothing to it and we do nothing with it, then we receive it. And we'll talk more about on tomorrow what we have to do what we have to learn how to do. Jesus has really already taught us. He's already shown us in the word of God what to do when this happens. So I pray that this has given you a little bit more clarity about how depression works. I want to let you know something that I still have to say that God is raising up an army. What the enemy meant for bad God is going to turn it around for good. But we're going to be able to speak with spiritual intelligence to other believers and even to the world as God begins to place us on platforms to help people. There are many people in distress right now. And I'm here to tell you that what you are going through, God is going to teach you even while you're in the midst of it. And you're going to become a private investigator. <laughs> and you are going to be raised up and walk, walk in a place of authority and help someone else. Yes, spiritual intelligence. <laughs> yes, we will walk. We will know the terms. We will know. We will understand. We will be the army of God to help others. We will have the empathy. We will understand. We will be patient with others. I'm here to tell you what the enemy meant for bad. <laughs> he shouldn't have ever depressed you. <laughs> no, you. That was the wrong move to make. Because I'm here to tell you, it's going to turn around. And God will call upon what you have learned to help someone else. And we will be ready. We will be ready. So God bless you. I pray that you have a little bit more insight about the perspective that God has shared with me about how depression works. And then tomorrow, we're going to talk about how it is, or why it is, that one of God's children can be depressed. Why? Filled with the Spirit of God? Knowing all the Bible verses? <laughs> oh yeah, anybody, anybody, no matter what your creed, no matter what your nationality, no matter your gender, no matter your age, can be depressed. Saved or not. But we have a relationship with the depression cure. The spirit of the living God. And we will rise. We shall live and not die. God bless you. Till we meet again, love and kisses to you. And thank you for the opportunity for me to serve you. Such an honor. God bless you.